everybody. Welcome to today's interview. We are interviewing Leslie and her family and her fiance, Sam. And today we have, um, it's, it's a big story and it's, it's a story where all hope was lost. And that was just two months ago. So what I'd love to do is right now and to have Leslie introduce herself and her girls who are with her right now. Go ahead, Leslie. So, hi, I'm Leslie Burby. Um, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's um, actually when this one was born. Um, yeah, so 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago, um, with Hashimoto's thyroid, hypothyroidism. Um, when I was 18, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, I had endometriosis, polycystic ovaries. Um, you name it. There's a lot and of you name it. I had a bunch of things nobody could solve. I seemed to be allergic to everything, but nobody could pinpoint anything I was allergic to. Um, every time I ate, I was bloated and, and um, uncomfortable and miserable. Um, when October came around of October 2018, I started to feel really sick but nothing really made sense. So I just couldn't make sense of anything. And I just kept pushing through until the night after Halloween, um, everything kind of came to a head. And November 1st, I called my neighbor and 911 because I thought I was dying. Yeah. Um, I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, it felt like someone was squeezing my heart and my vision went blurry. I couldn't think clearly. Um, I went from, I am I have a great job. I have my dream job in, in New York. And um, I went from being very smart to not being able to understand a simple sentence. Yeah. Leslie, can you introduce your girls? I'd love to ask them what that was like, how the experience for them was dealing with all the symptoms of your autoimmune diseases. So um, introduce the girls. So this right here is Anastasia. Hi, Anastasia. Hi. And this right here is Mary. Hi. Yeah. Hi there, Mary. I want to ask the two of you, like, what was it like seeing your mom go through the hell that she went through between wow. October and November? How did you, how did that make you guys feel? It was scary. Like, I remember we were supposed to have a Halloween party. Mm -hmm. And I woke up on the morning of the Halloween party. And I heard a weird noise. And I didn't know what it was. And then I went to my mom's room and she was puking. But she was, like, puking so hard that it was, like, Scary. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, like, we come home from school one day. This is when she thought she's having a heart attack. And we get off the bus, and my brother was at the bus stop with our neighbor, which I thought was weird because he takes yeah. a van. So he's usually just at the house. And um, we got off the bus, and Patrick was like, Mom had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And I was just really scared. Yeah, and then our neighbor was like, I tried to calm us. She's like, no, that's not what happened. So you guys literally thought your mom was dying. Yeah, yeah. we thought she was dying because we, when we got off the bus and we were back and Pat's like, mom, got, mom had a heart attack. And yeah. like the first thing I thought was I was losing my mom. Yeah. Which is, she's really important to me. Yeah. And like, if I didn't have her, I wouldn't make make it through my depression and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, so your mom has been a big piece of you getting out of your own depression. Yeah. Aw. So I want to ask you guys, like mom's been through a journey in our program the last two months. I mean, she's done a lot of hard work. She's done this program. She's put, she's, you guys have been helping her with this as well, right? Yeah. So I want to ask you, what is, what is, new mom like now what is mom like now two months later what's the difference she can definitely get like more involved in stuff now than she yeah um, used to um she's more healthier she can do things more better now she can get up she can work and 
I feel like she's getting better um, now that she's been in this program. The program also has helped me with the supplements. The supplements yeah. also helps my depression. So that also helped me in a lot of ways. I remember she'd also like she mess up something on her work and then get so aggravated with herself. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to get fired, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So it was hard for you guys to see your mom suffering and worried about her job and trying to take care of you guys. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is not only did mom get better, but mom getting better has helped you guys get better. And she was really nervous and anxious about losing her job and it was making you guys nervous. But now that's totally turned around for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I heard you guys just came back from a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a little while since then. Now we're both sick. And I think mom took you guys on vacation. Well, I mean, did you think two months ago that mom would be back taking you guys on vacation two months no. ago? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's huge. So what it sounds like to me is you got your mom back. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, mom has been through a lot yeah. of times, a lot of sicknesses that me and Mary have got scared by and of course Patrick doesn't know at all what's happening mm. Pat just like I remember be, being him there was one time where I was like four mm -hmm. and I think my mom, I think she had like a, my mom had a seizure or something yeah and then the hospital came and I was so confused and like they like, because so, these people just come into our home and they had the big thing stretcher. that they, yeah. the stretcher that they put you on to like get yeah. you in. The stretcher, it. yeah. The, when mom and got I, home, she just told us that she had the wiggles. Like I was, yeah, because we called it the wiggles because yeah. she was doing yeah. out to first, like, we didn't, we didn't really, really know. know what was happening. And I remember they came and they like asked, like, my mom was on the couch and they just asked her what her name was. And then my dad told us to go upstairs and then me and my sister went to their room because and then we saw them taking her into the yeah. ambulance. So yeah. there's been a lot of really scary experiences with sick mom. Yeah, definitely. So I think it's gonna be a big adjustment for you guys getting used to well mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like we've seen we've seen good mom. Now and then. Good mom. <laughs> well, mom. Yes. <laughs> Good mom. We see her now and then, but like all of the sicknesses and allergies that we've never known of made her so sick that it was very, very scary for us. Can I ask you something? So I know you saw your mom going through the program and you know your mom learned a lot of stuff. And the stuff that your mom learned, she was able to help you guys out as well. And Anastasia, what uh, the new stuff that your mom learned, how do you think it changed your life? The stuff that my mom learned from the program was very helpful and helped me succeed in a lot of things. My depression was severely bad. Um so bad that I was basically crippling in it but my mom started the program and of course I was on the pill but like that wasn't enough and I started taking the supplements my mom would open them and put them in my smoothie and I got a lot better a lot faster yeah, she really did um and, I finally um, got to smile again so that program really changed my life and really, helped me smile she's oh. always locked in her room yeah. Like, I'd go to tell her something and her door was locked and I'd ask her to open the door and she never opened the door. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I would either stay silent or scream at someone. Even, I was that. even Pat noticed he was like, Anna's not even hanging out with us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You know, girls, uh, I'm like, it really like brings me so much joy to hear this because Anastasia, when I was 14, I was you. I went through yeah. the exact same thing and I wish I my mom was able to get educated and had a doctor who was able to teach her the stuff that could help turn it around because it sucks being depressed and it sucks being worried about your mom all the time yeah. right 
I'm so happy for you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you. I know you guys are off to go see a, a, a movie. I will let you guys go. Thank you so much. And then let's get back to your mom. Thank you, you two. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Leslie, man, they stole the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you. I mean, when I know, I remember that phone call that you had with us initially, and mm -hmm. it was hard for you to commit to yourself. Yes. Can um, you, a lot of people watching this right now with autoimmune disease and tons of these symptoms, their moms, their dads, and they also have the same problem saying like, there's no possible way I can commit myself to this program or to investing in my health in this way. I mean, what made you actually decide to do it? Well, honestly, Maggie, I thought I was going to die. So I, I really felt like I had no other choice. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I had seen specialist after specialist. I was in the hospital for several days. Nobody could help me. They had run every kind of test, seen every kind of specialist. Everyone was scratching their heads. They discharged me because they couldn't figure out what was wrong. Typical, um, right? This is so typical people with autoimmunity because people right. don't understand all the different targets that are under autoimmune attack. Right. And they, you know, they're like, if, if that hurts, then that can't hurt. And I'm like, who says? Like, I'm not making this up. I'm not enjoying all these biopsies and, and x-rays. Oh, seriously, you were totally enjoying all these biopsies. Oh, yeah. Total <laughs> fun. Come on, come <laughs> here, bro. Give me another biopsy. Yeah. So good. <laughs> <laughs> the endoscopy was my favorite. I would have oh, taken that so over a patient any day. I'm happy I never gotten one of those yet. So, um, but, you know, what resonated with me, though, was I invest, I've invested so much in sickness. My whole life, I've been sick. I remember at seven years old, starting to go to the hospital, mm -hmm. and no one had answers. And finally, I had an opportunity to have answers and finally be healthy. And I just said, you know, and I said to Sam, I said, I want to stop investing in my sickness and start investing in my health. So this was a good, this is a great conversation because people will say, I've spent a lot of money and I've been burned. Why should I spend more money? Yes. And I think, I mean, and, and Sam and I had this conversation too, when we had that phone call, because I said, a lot of what people do is they spend the money to invest in staying sick. Right. So what happens is you're spending, like, if you think about what you spent even in the last five years, it's well over ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, something, you know, huge. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that you invested that money, but then your results were the same or worse. So right. you have to look at your investment in terms of what is your return on investment. So if your return in, on investment is negative, then it's going to be a very poor investment. Right. Right. So, and I remember, uh, Sam, you were more engineering-ish about this and you were, we were talking about this and, and, I, and we said, what if you invested the same amount or way less in actually being well, what would be the outcomes worth to you? What are they worth to you? Because if the return on investment is you actually getting your life back, having your kids be able to trust you and you trusting yourself, helping your child with their depression, what is the price on the return on that investment? I'm just curious. What is that worth to you? It's priceless. It is. It is. It, you didn't only help Anastasia. You helped Mary because awesome. for years she had horrible leg pains. And everyone would just say, oh, it's just growing pains. Mm -hmm. She hasn't grown. Like... <laughs> The poor thing, you just saw her. She's she's the older child and she's a foot shorter than Anna. Wow. Um she has hypotonia, she's um trouble gaining muscle, and it they said that, you know, it maybe the pain is just from that. I kept getting a lot of maybes, which to me means they don't know, they're guessing. So um I started putting her on um, the calcium, magnesium, zinc supplements. And 
she no longer has leg pain. I mean, I'll take that back. She probably has leg pains once a month. Whereas before she was in such agony, I would have to carry her up the stairs mm -hmm. at the end of the day because her legs hurt so bad. There were plenty, like, like almost every night she'd wake up in the middle of the night crying in pain because her legs hurt so bad. We'd have to leave places because her legs hurt so bad. So what I realized through this program was she was malnourished in, she was deficient in calcium. And, and um, so I started giving her that and she went from taking ibuprofen every day for the pain to now taking a calcium, magnesium, zinc and no more ibuprofen. Wow. Leslie, did you, I mean, I seriously, this is news to me and I'm, I'm just tickled. And my question for you is, did you think when you joined this program, Sam, did you guys think when you guys joined this program that this was going to happen to your kids? No. No. No, because I mean, it was just, we were just trying to get me to be able to get out of bed. I was well, so sick and so weak. I couldn't get out of bed. Well, I remember um, the biggest concern you had was keeping your job. You were on leave and you were the biggest concern you had was, you know, um, coming back to your job and being able to keep it. Yeah. And Sam, your worry was what's the financial, you know, strain on the family if she continues to not be able to work. Yeah. Right. right. Where are you at with that now, Sam? It's gone, it's gone better. And, and, um, you know, the, the, that fear has dissipated now. Oh, so, well, it wasn't just the fear of finance finances either. It's just the fear of the unknown of what was going on with her. No one had any answers. And well, I remember that so you, were, you guys are so used to no one having any answers. You said, what if at the end of this, nothing happens and she's the same or worse? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you at with that fear now? I. Uh, it's gone. I mean, I, I seen the difference. It's, it's night and day. <laughs> and you know what I love about this, Sam, is, is that you went from the kind of skeptical resistant, <laughs> kind of had to, had to rope you in, um, partner to someone where now you're like, you were full in, you played full out during the program. I mean, you're getting groceries, you were part of these training, all the mastermind calls and live coaching calls. You were on a lot of these and you learned with her. I did. I did. It, it's, uh, I've had learned a whole new way of sh shopping. I had to learn, uh, what to and not to put in certain meals. And, um, I've made a few mistakes uh down down the road but you know okay. i only need to be yelled at once and then i i <laughs> have to work, work it again i i remember one time i accidentally put uh butter in the mashed potatoes because it was a habit for 20 some odd years right and uh let's just say that was the last time i i ever did that again <laughs> i just needed to be reminded once and uh, now it's a habit not to put butter in. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. We have non-dairy butter, so that helps a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I have a big question because a lot of, um, a lot of, well, I mean, I know for the biggest barrier for Leslie was whether it was, she was worth it to invest in herself. And what I'm hearing from you, Leslie, is not only were you worth it, but your, your daughters were worth it and the results in them were worth it and it's priceless. Right. And Sam, your concern was what um, was the fear of being burned a million times in the past and not getting outcome. Right. And what I'm hearing is the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Yeah. And I gone through a lot of grief and loss over <laughs> my life. And I didn't want to be going through that again with someone that I love so much. And, uh, you know, I, I had, while she was going through all this, I had to stay strong for the family as best as I could. And inside, you know, it, it was killing me though. You know, not knowing what was going on, not knowing if the, you know, the results were, we were going to get good results from the program.
But as time went on and I started seeing her get regain her strength and regain her her brain back, get her brain back, quote mm-hmm. unquote. Right. You know, th- those fears alleviated. Yeah. I love that because results and outcomes speak for themselves. But what I heard was that I remember being on that, um, our te- you know, us being on the call with you, the first call when you guys were enrolling in the program. I mean, what I what we saw was fear. There's so much fear. Like, you know, Leslie had fear about, you know, whether I sh- I'm, I'm worth investing in, you know, whether my outcomes are worth it or not. And honestly, what laid under your skepticism and fear, what I'm hearing is fear of loss because you had so many. Yeah. You don't want to lose her. Well, Sam, was it worth it? Yeah, w- w- without a doubt. <laughs> Without a doubt, I've, I've already seen the return on investment. <laughs> it's, it's an inside joke. Well, but, why is it an inside joke? Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say, Maggie, the PG version of that would be... Um, You're very happy together. Yeah. You know, one of my biggest issues was my hormone balance, and that's been straightened out. (laughs) Oh, hell yes. (laughs) (laughs) People have no idea how, I guess, I mean, people don't have any idea how important intimacy is and how many layers of intimacy there is in our relationships. And sometimes we don't know until it's gone. Yeah. And sometimes we don't appreciate it till it's back. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I'm just thrilled to pieces that so many pieces of your lives are back. Yeah, us too. I, um, like you said, I, when we started the program, it's like a week into the program and I finally had um, a colonoscopy done that I was, had been waiting for and that I had to fight for because they accused me of being crazy for having pain on my right side. And they ended up finding, a, you know, a huge um, precancerous um, polyp or whatever you call it. And um, yeah, and... So I had that removed and, um, but I was still in pain and I was still having all these weird symptoms. I was extremely weak. I could barely walk up the stairs. Yeah, I I remember the first three weeks, you literally acted like you were gonna die. Yeah, yeah, I I couldn't, I couldn't even sit, just sitting up to listen to the calls was exhausting. Like I, I laid in bed all the time I couldn't, I didn't have the strength to cook for my, my family. I think when we first started, I, Sam had to help me to the counter. He got me a chair because I couldn't even stand at the counter. Uh, My vision was so blurry. I couldn't even read the recipe. So he had to read it to me. My memory was so bad. He would have to reread it to me several times because I couldn't even remember two minutes later what he had just told me. So, I mean, so then the frustration would kick in um, because, you know, I'm Italian. (laughs) 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 That Irish Italian Italian temper just kind of got a hold of me sometimes with that frustration. So, um, you know, it's frustrating for stuff that used to come so easily just became impossible. I mean, last year, all summer, I kept having a hard time walking every now and then. Just my hips would just stop working and I was in so much pain. And the doctor just told me, oh, you have bursitis. I'm like, well, what's that? Oh, there's some bursa. <laughs> you know the better question is what the hell is causing the bursitis dude right. 
And I'm like, well, why, why do I have that? How do I get rid of that? Oh, you can't. Just take some ibuprofen. Yeah, and then meanwhile, go get another colonoscopy. Look at why you have another polyp. Yeah. <laughs> what? So what I'm hearing is, is that it really was just a world full of specialists, more testing, more biopsies and all this. And it was really confusing as hell. And now it's like, without going through that rigmarole, more and more diagnostics, you're feeling better. Oh, I feel so much better. No more pain in my hips. I'm, I can, I go up and down the stairs 50 times a day now. And I spend hours a day in the kitchen preparing healthy, nutritious meals. Um, I mean, and everybody, everybody's seen a difference. Like even the girls have said, like when, when they, um, when they don't eat mom's food, they yes, they feel sick. They feel awful. They're like, I don't know what they put in their food, but. So this is really about trust, Leslie, because for me, what I hear in your story is that there was a lack of trust towards all the specialists and doctors that you were seeing, and you were starting to lose trust and faith in yourself. And Sam was losing trust in the fact that you were going to stay alive. Yeah. And for me, this is a journey about regaining trust. The girls have regained trust in you. Mm -hmm. You've, I mean, you've regained trust in yourself. And I want to ask, what was the process? How, I mean, for a lot of people, it's hard to trust me. I'm a doctor they met on the internet. Right. What was that process like for you to actually learn to be able to trust me and our program? You know, it was, it, I did, I did have my concerns, if I'm being honest, um, up front, because like you said, I, you know, I don't know you, you're, I'm speaking to you through the internet, you're across the country, <laughs> you know, I have no idea if this is going to work, you know, there's so many unknowns to this, but, you know, when I stop to think about it, most of my life I had unknowns. And I, you know, and I watched those testimonials of other people and I thought, you know, what do I have to lose at this point in my life? I have nothing but anything to gain. So, you know, I, I, you know, I dove in, I trusted what you said, I followed your rules, don't read ahead, focus, <laughs> you know, implement each thing, you know, and, um, and I, I really just made me a priority finally in my life because ultimately I can't care for my kids if I'm not around. That's right. A lot of people don't do this program because they say because of their kids. Right. And what you just told me is you did it because of your kids. Absolutely. You did it because Absolutely. of Sam. And I, and I told them that I, it was a sacrifice for the whole family. And I told them, you know, yes, I can't read to you tonight. Or yes, I can't sing you song tonight. Or I can't, you know, do this tonight. But this is only for eight weeks. This is so mommy gets healthy. This is so mommy can go bike riding with you again and go hiking and all of that. In hindsight, was this a sacrifice or was this the lottery? Oh, it was the lottery. But when we first started, all they saw was, come on, mom, why can't you read to me? <laughs> and I started setting healthy boundaries. You uh, know? That's part of the work we do, Leslie. That's part of the work. And I was like, you know, because here's the thing. I gave you two hours. I offered to help you with your homework for two hours. You didn't take advantage of that. Well, now you're in my time. Now this is my mommy time. And mommy has her own homework. So, you know, so it started, it was good for everyone because it taught everyone better time management, better respect of everyone's time. You know, it, there's a lot of underlying skills that we all learned. <laughs> because people don't realize how much mindset work we do, how much we change the thinking of not just you, but of Sam and your children. All of you guys have actually meant, went through a metamorphic change in how you guys think. That's affected mm -hmm. your entire family. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for this interview. And this is very vulnerable, Cher, and your kids for sharing their experience with us. And I am beyond touch. This has been a privilege and a joy for me to watch you and Sam and your girls go and your family go through our program. And there were surprises in this for me tonight. <laughs> I had no idea some of the impact that it's had on your kids. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't walk up the stairs when we started and now last week was spring break and Sam was working, but I decided to pack them all up and bring them on vacation and um, with, you know, three little kids and, that's, and I did it, you know, we went swimming and we walked around the aquarium. We had so much fun. So I would have never been able to do that, you know, and now I live a pain-free life and I'm healthy. I have my life back. I mean, I'm just forever indebted. Thank you, you too. And for those of you who are watching right now who want to learn more about our program, you can go to drmaggie.com. And you can also book a call with us to actually talk to us so we can learn more about you. And it's really important for us to actually talk to you in person to learn more about you. This isn't going shopping at the mall and buying something. This is, a, this is not a transaction, it's a relationship. And I am just so happy with the relationship that we have together and the outcomes that we've been able to achieve with you and your family. Thank you, you two, for being on this interview, for being in the program. You guys are an inspiration to everybody. Thanks, Thank Maggie. You. Thanks for all you do. Thank you.